Hi everyone, welcome back uh, to part number two here. So we're going to continue, you know, working on our scene. What I did this morning here while I was waiting for yet another thunderstorm to go by was I just uh, put in a little more green around him, a little bit of lighter color right through here, kind of like what I showed you, just kind of cleaning up the edges. I want to get these edges um, pretty much, uh, you know, a lot better. Now, in painting figures and stuff, there's some really good ones where I did some fishermen and stuff. And basically what I do with a figure is I put on the light and dark, or you can put the dark and the light. doesn't make a difference. Okay, I paint the lights and the darks. And then I come in with little tones that are right between the light and dark. These, like this little area here, would be considered a half tone, halfway between the light and the dark. So I put in the shadows and stuff. And so I start adding other smaller marks of color. So I would put in the light color of the horse here, the dark color of the horse, and then some of the medium tones in between. That's how I like to do it. And then what we're going to be doing today is breaking up some of that medium tone with more broken color. So sometimes, you know, and this is my palette, same palette. And I saved my palette since I did it overnight is I use these. These are old, you know, the old cafeteria trays. I get it for a couple of bucks on on online and I just missed it with the mister bottle on the top and then I just set it over my whole palette like that and it cuts the airflow off and these are the colors I had I put out a little bit of fresh white this morning because I was out of white but these are the same palette that I was using in the last video yesterday and they stay really nice okay all right so uh, what I do in, in, in doing this is, you know, break this up and then we're going to come in and break this up so you can see kind of a reddish tone, more of a bluish tone as I come in and work these shadows. And that's what I do, work these, work these areas. And along the way, I want to come in and do a little bit of cleanup. So I was just working with some greenish yellows and stuff like that here and do a little bit of cleanup right up around, especially like right up in this area, get rid of some of those little holidays and that advances the horse and sometimes like here I'll just add a little extender because it's like sometimes I'll use my brush like this to kind of shape up some of the if I got a, a you know bit of the anatomy off or something like that soften some of these edges back down through here get some of this color in here it's what I like to do this is the way I like to approach it you can use water you can use a little bit of extender something that causes it to move. The extender will also, you know, delay the, the drying of it. And so when I'm working like this pretty fast, I don't always like that. So, and so I'll start, start to soften up and work some of these edges. So I worked those colors several times. I worked the, co the horse here, put in the front planes. I'm going to show you on this one exactly what I do. But you can see that, and you leave these marks, and you leave them pretty rough. They're not blended out. See, the light to the shadow there is, is not blended out. So I, uh, I'm very kind of, you know, very specific with these marks. So let's take a look over here at the other rider. And uh, one of the first things I'll do is I'll take, let's use that brush I was just doing. Let's take a little bit of the green. And it, what I what I want to do is just come close with the green. I don't want to be exactly the same. You know, for the green background, a little bit of light here. Let's kind of take a look at where I am right in there. And that's not so bad. It's a little more yellowish. So we'll add a little bit of green and burnt sienna to that. And take that down just a bit here. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of scrub this around. I want to get rid of those little light patches that are there between him. This is all going to be, you know, we're going to do this all several times as we start to make some of those, um, the trees. Maybe a little blue in here, a little different color right in here. That might be a bit dark, so we'll just lighten some of that up. And this is what I call the modeling of color, too. So I don't make exactly the same tone as I work this through here, because I want these you know, these are going to be trees, but I use a lot of vertical marks. I'll come in like this into some horizontals here, but I'll use a lot of vertical marks here because that's the, that's the look of the trees that I want to give here. And so we use a lot of shorter vertical marks, which gives the up and down motion of all of these forest trees that's going to be there and you can see that starts to clean him up and bring him up what we're going to do later on is we'll add a little blue a little bit of burnt sienna here to this 
and we'll start making some areas of shadows here that will be different. So you can see you get some variation here and this will give us, let's get a little more burnt sienna in that. The burnt sienna into these greens and stuff tones it down, grays it down a bit. So and what we're going to want to have is just marks like this. We don't want to kind of outline them, so we'll let some of those marks kind of run into him there. But we want this modeling effect. So like you see back up there, you get into those trees, little modeling effect or, or just little marks of, of color like this that come through. And so we'll I'll do this quite a bit actually because it's an important part of the painting. So I'll do this with lights, I'll do this with darks as I come through and start setting some of the uh, the feeling of the trees. And as you go further back, your marks, what you want to do is get your marks smaller because the trees, you got to remember each one of these little marks is like the shadow side of a tree or something like that. So as you come forward, back up over here, some of these marks can get a little bigger. And then as you go further back, back back through here, those marks will get smaller. And we're going to build them and build them and build them like that several times until we get the, uh, the feeling of it. Sometimes I'll use my brush. Sometimes I'll put some on with a knife. Variation is the key. And that's what I like to do. Now, let's come in and let's just work. I'm going to go back to my smaller brush here. And I'll do a little bit of work, like, you know, his hat here is a little, uh, a little wide. So I will paint back and, and I start to adjust my drawing a bit here with some of my tree color and stuff like that to, let's just take some of that into his face and um, work those colors that way. And I'll get some flesh tone, which is my just simple burnt sienna and white here. And uh, let's just restate, he's going to be mostly, he's going to have a little line of light because his face is turned slightly. So, But we'll just go ahead and kind of base in a little angle back this way. And uh, we'll touch into a little, a touch of white here. And so he has... And, I'm not going to do all the detail of the face. We'll do that a little bit later this afternoon here. But I'll just put in a, an idea of that light. You know, I mean, uh, Tom here doesn't have any, but we might want to just indicate just a little bit on there. Just uh, give me and see, I'll just leave a mark like that. That's, that's where it gets really good. Now, see, I have the light and the shadow, and i got to look at my light. The light can go up again. A beautiful tan color is the pine green and burnt sienna. And uh, if you want it a little more gray, you can get some blue into that. But a, a nice light, and I'm going to go up probably a value 8 or 9 here and restate a little bit onto that hat. Maybe a bit lighter, almost up to a 9, almost up to white here. As a nice little mark, I'll just use the chisel of my brush here as a uh, mark of the the light color there. And then I'll go down, so there's my light, I'll go down, gray it down just a bit, and maybe put a mark right in here that is a half tone, halfway between the light and shadow. And then down over here, maybe I take a little bit of blue with that, burnt sienna, and start to head into that shadow. And I'll, I'll take a few marks, like uh, I'll step back up a little, little bit lighter right in here but still kind of a shadow and see I'll hit it a couple times and that's what gives the the interest to like his hat okay so I'll, I'll do that a few times now there's some deeper uh, shadow there and I like to I like to constantly brush mix so my my tones change slightly but I'll put a little oval shape down here at the base of his hat down on this side here, maybe a, a bit of the shadow line up on, up underneath that there. Um, I've got his hat kind of rounded up and his there in the, is flattened out. So I can flatten some of that out. And again, you can take some of your tree color, some of these colors that are here, and, you know, adjust 
and just work that color out like this but you can adjust some of those shapes like that as you start to develop his hat a bit more now I need to have a touch more white but it's this this type of technique of working the values like this works really really well so a good tan you know is is, is uh, the green and a bit of the burnt sienna let's get just a touch more white to that here and I'll widen out his his hat right here because it the brim is pointed down so well this is where I start to look at it and start to correct it and stuff like that and along the way I'm going to uh, and it, I'm going to make a few errors and I know that and I I just slowly start you know I I don't let the the errors and stuff like that worry me I just slowly start refining it to what I want it to be maybe a little more light right up here up into the front maybe a, a hit of it right there on the side and you can see I can just let's take just a bit of the green here and take this edge down just a touch here like that so and that's how I work these out and so you can see it slowly starts to take shape and I did the same thing over here on his hat that slowly starts to take shape the uh, one of the things that turns their head really well is the hair so I have a little bit of blue burnt sienna here a nice darker brown let's just make sure we get a nice dose of that he'll have a touch of that underneath his hat is showing up here and I leave just a bit there maybe for what would be his ear and um, I haven't like I haven't done the facial features which I'm going to keep very simplistic just little marks but uh, I might want to just and to soften that out I might want to just tap into a little flesh just to take some of that and tap some of that out and that's what I like to do so I keep the everything very understated like when I work up here onto uh, his bandana and I'll work over here on this one this is where when I'm working towards some of the end colors I won't mix it up real well I'll uh, start doing smaller little taps of color like where do I see that brighter little touch of this red I'll add a few of that maybe add a little blue and the um, a little blue and the uh, violet which makes a real dark shadow I'll keep some of that shadow now his is uh, more pink than Tom Selleck's over there so I'll take some of this light and a little burnt sienna a little light little pink and I'll just tap some of that around here as well and I you know it's like what I paint a lot of things I always tell you I paint too much so I put on a little too much and then I paint back with some of the shadow taking some of that out I paint back and forth I want to get uh, some lighter little pink colors in there here and but I love to paint back and forth and so I'll just tap a little bit of this around don't you know try not to like do big swoops of it take because the fabric kind of light doesn't turn it kind of moves in straight lines so I want to you know I, I want to tap it around there in kind of straight straight marks you know because light moves in those kinds of marks and stuff that you have there but uh, let's get that a little grayer a, a little bit grayer He's a little wider, a little grayer. That's that's better. And, um, you know, sometimes like a, a, a red with a little bit of the green here is a nice shadow or a little bit of blue and violet into that as well. Just model that all up. Nice shadows here. Just tap some of that through. And, uh, again, I can make that a, a touch lighter. But, see, that's how I work on it. Just back and forth like that. And I never, I, as you can see, I'm making quick marks rather than uh, basically uh, then I'm making quick marks as opposed to uh, um, blending anything together. I don't. I just let the marks, the color marks there because this is going to optically blend, which means your eye is going to uh, see the, your eye is going to soften everything out as you go back. So I'll add a little 
bit more dark there. Let's get some lighter tones back up onto his, before we adjust that, let's get some nice tan, which a tan color is always the burnt sienna and the green, and I vary those the amounts to get various tan colors. But I want a nice light, so almost up to a 10, maybe a nine, eight or a nine here, on this part of his shoulder, right here, as we develop that. And, um, which I've lost some of my drawing, so I'm going to just put this back in. Sometimes it's easier for me to put something like this back in with a brush than it is to actually sketch it or draw it. And uh, I'll add a, a bit more of the slightly darker, not quite as much light, back up over here. We'll develop this part of the shoulder. I'll paint back into that bandana just a bit. And um, that shadow becomes a little bit more violet over on that other side, so I make up a slight violet. Sometimes I'll add a little extender, and again, this just keeps it, uh, keeps the color moving. It's uh, thin it out a bit. I don't, you know, when I'm on the shadow side, you know, there's a really good, and you've heard me say this in other videos, there's a really good rule. See how that sits in there? Just nice. And see, it's it just a couple marks, and see, it's not perfect. Don't don't go in there and try to make it perfect. Leave those marks. But there's a real good rule in all the prima and landscapes and everything that shadows are more transparent and the highlights are more opaque. And I try to follow that. So my, you run your hand over here, my highlights are a little bit chunky and over here it's a little bit more thin in color. And I do follow that as, you know, not always, but I do try to many times. So I'll push some of this nice cooler shadow down this side here and um, Maybe so it's a little bit of violet into those tan colors. Let's hit this side of his jacket here, mostly right there. Maybe uh, a little bit lighter and a little bit warmer tan, so a little more green and burnt sienna. See, I just love mixing or just modeling up these colors. So I want to value somewhere, and see, I can slide to warm it or I can slide to cool it. And I'm looking for a tone right about in there that I can use on the bottom part of that arm there that causes the arm to come up in front of that shadow but yet is not as light and as warm as that over there. Does that make sense? So you can see a little bit of the blue in there. Let's uh, dark and change that just a touch. Touch more blue in it to it and drop in the bottom part of his arm there like that. And uh, we'll need to uh, take some of this deeper shadow color here a little bit and drop some of that shadow a little sketching I love what I'm using is this little number two filbert synthetic filbert and uh, this is what I really like when I'm painting small figures and stuff like that this is what I really like to use because I can just about sketch with it so I can use some of this shadow here to sketch down the shadow part of his arm there and I'll come back up over here and hit that light stroke there again. Maybe down that arm there. Okay, and so I don't lose it. I'm just going to put a little mark of light flesh there on towards his hand. A lot of times I put him in gloves, riding gloves, but we'll put a little mark there for his hand. That's going to be hanging on to the reins. I kind of like how that mark kind of came out. Let's give the, uh, him just a bit of that as well here. Just a touch more light right up there. There we go. See, that's how I work it, those, those quick little marks. Because when you step back or here, even here on the, the camera, so when you're looking at it on that camera, that camera's back about five feet. Usually I like it six to eight feet, but it's back about five feet. So, you, so every, these colors are starting to blend. So, but if we zoom in on it, you'll see that none of that is blended at all. Okay. And uh, that's the way I really like to do that is, is uh, not blended at all. Let's pull back that shoulder a little bit here. Let that come down. And that shoulder's got to go, when his arms raise like that, that's too much of a straight line. So that shoulder has to come down just a bit and then 
come around. And uh, I'll just restate a little bit of that lightness here on that edge of the shoulder, or this edge of the arm, right before that one comes in there. And not bent quite exactly perfect here yet, so I've got to do a little bit of work here. Sometimes I'll take a, a half-tone plane and just pull back like this, which widens that and gives a... I always find that, that angled mark right there, right around the elbow, just always works because it like gives the example of little creases in the the fabric and stuff like that of his of his elbow, and uh, but it's just a matter of you know refining a little bit here. We'll go a little more shadow underneath that, maybe down that side, and I'll carry some of that shadow color into some of the other areas here that I want on this on this other side. Now, on the photo, he's turned just a bit, so he gets hit with the light over here as well. So I'll just drag a bit of that light here, right there like that. Just pick up a little bit of that light and uh, pull it across his arm there just a bit. And that looks, that's, that's pretty good so far. I, you know, good old Tom could have a bit more light, maybe right up in there. See, it just, and I like to, again, like here, I love to use like the chisel, the brush, lay the flat brush, lay the brush down, and just pull and drag and sometimes get a little, you know, granulated stroke there that just applies that color really nice. So that's what I do, and I'm going to go through and do the, the horse and stuff this same way. Let's, um, get that white blaze that onto this horse. So I'll just tap some of the white right into this and we'll reset the blaze. Now, see if the blaze goes a little bit too light, then I just take some other color and paint back into it. So I paint back and forth. So here, and, and try to use your brush in different ways. I love the, the angles of setting it down and just pulling because I get that fracturing of the strokes. And there, you have a lot of control of it, but sometimes you can't always get it out exactly, and that's too big there. Get all of it. But see, it gets that little broken mark there that works pretty well on this horse. Um, let's put just a bit more light right out there. That's pretty good. And uh, he, we said we were going to paint him basically as a sorrel, so the little yellow, a little bit of... Uh, of burnt sienna, green, and yellow here. And uh, let's pull down the side of his face here a bit. Here. Um, he will, you know, with the, them like the blaze and stuff that's here, they will, that will, I'm going to put it up over the eye socket just a bit, like what's in the, the sample there. There we go. Widen out the T of his head there, the wideness of his head. And we'll put a little light, add a little light color to that base sorrel color. Put some of that down. That's pretty good. And I'll work, you know, like I'll, I'll, I'll work the, uh, a little bit around his nose. We'll put a you know, the, the sorrels a lot of times, or the one that I had for many years, had almost a flesh tone to the front of his face, to the, the angle part of his face. And so I'll put a bit of that in there. And then we'll get some nice blues and the burnt sienna, touch of blue, touch of red, beautiful, all real cool colors that you can use down over here onto the sole, maybe a bit more red into that here so it's not quite that dark. See, I won't take that out, I'll just paint into it. And let's just set that in, maybe widen for his, his jawline a bit. And, you know, uh, the, the sample one there, the horse, he has a bit of that light that's coming right around. And so this is all detail work that 
you know, normally I don't go too far into it, but I, uh, you know, if, if you want to, you can. You know, it's like here, I put in the flat part of his face and then did a little detail. Not done, I still have some broken color to put in there, but it starts to look pretty good. So, this, a bit of the burnt sienna and the yellow, a bit of the white here, gets that nice orangey or light. Let's go just a bit more light yet. Maybe even a bit more red and yellow here, so it's a little brighter orange here, which is right up into that light. And we started that yesterday right in here, that nice light. Yeah, to see, that's a good light stroke. And then I'll take that down a bit, a little half tone right on sides of it. And see, I got a little more brush marks there, and I'm just going to leave that. Maybe a touch of the shadowy color here will bring just the edge of that neck up just a bit lighter and you can start to look at his muscling so he has you know this front this front leg muscle right here that pulls down then it goes into those chest muscles there so I'll leave a, a little bit of the burnt sienna slightly darker right out here which will and you can start painting some of his muscle structure there as well but I, so I've got the light and I've got the dark, and then I come in here, maybe a little burnt sienna and some red here, and I'll start putting in some of the half tones that I'll see and where I see, and he's get, he gets a, this is kind of hard with this small one, but brush, but I'll, I'll put in that big shoulder muscle here, and you know, most of the, like what I do through here, most of that's just all one color because it doesn't need to, I don't, I mean, I'll break it up with some broken color. So what is a broken color? Broken color is, even I'll take something like this, that's a little cooler of the sorrel color, and I'll just whisper a bit of that into this other horse, and you can barely see it, but you see how it breaks it up. That's the broken color, and that will cause a better harmony between your two horses. So over here on the sorrel here, what I might want to do is take some of my lighter guello, guello gray color and add a bit of that around this guy as well in some areas. And so they'll carry those colors, you see. And, of course, we'll put some light in there as well. But you use it like an accent tone, not like a complete painted tone. It's like an accent tone here as that goes on. And uh, maybe an edge of a brighter little tone there. Sometimes maybe a bit of the, the white in here. So I see you can break that up. Start with shadows and highlights, you know, and vary, you know, we know those shadows or blues that, you know, anything of the dark, the blues, the reds and stuff, and start some of the, the deeper, darker shadows. Carry some of those through. And um, then you can uh, start to uh, put on some lights and then half tones. Everything gets developed into half tones here. So we'll start a little bit of this color now coming down here onto his neck. And see, I'll just pull that down. And so you see, he starts to take some shape. And sometimes I will, um, you know, take a lighter, softer color here, a lighter little sorrel color here push some of that into his face and then go back with some of the light that is his little blaze here and push that back on here as well here so he'll start and so I'll go back and forth several times with this I'll look for some just a little C shape of dark here for the mark of his nostrils here of where those are going to be. I'm going to keep his painting very simplistic though. Maybe just a little light, almost guello gray, a little green with this. Right down this side, this breaks up 
see a, that guello gray there from that other horse is beautiful on the shadow side of his face there because it's a nice cool color. See, just drop that down and bring that in. So, you know, these small marks, little marks, and this is why I love this too, these little marks like this just do great things. Let's uh, put in a bit of that shadow there. And then I gotta restate his eye here as well here so we'll go back into our dark blue here sometimes I like it a little bit gray with some of that red if I can just grab some of that today gray it off a bit and a nice dark color here let's push just a small little mark and right in here a little more blue a little cooler right in there there we go and that's what i'll do and so i'll look back to some of these other cooler areas in here i'll add those in and just paint these paint back and forth with the lights and stuff and then i'll add some of these same kind of mark details exactly the same thing that i'm doing here i'll work on this horse and clean up in through this area the same way. So I go put on some light, put on some dark, or you can put dark and then light, then a half tone. And then what you do with that half tone, once you identify it, then you start taking some of the other tones. So right over in here, like this kind of a gray, uh, guello gray tone, which is my burnt sienna and blue, a little bit of violet, and then some white here, uh, this kind of a gray tone here is beautiful would be beautiful right down into some of this side of the sorrel here you see that will that's the broken color so that's what we want to do there so we'll break that up maybe a bit more of the justice the burnt sienna right down there but that'll start uh, making some different colors on him let's get this little bit right there and I'll build that so I'm just going to go ahead and do <clears throat> and do that real quick you'll see this on several other videos that I do on horses and stuff that I uh, paint this way using a small little brush like this is pretty nice this little too because you just keep those marks in there like that and uh, that keeps it uh, pretty nice but uh, give that a go and see if you like it we'll put on some of the details and uh, I'll show a few clips along the way and then we'll come back and I'll show you we'll start working on some of the front and then we'll go paint some of that ocean and stuff okay all right good things coming
Hi everyone, welcome back. Well, I had to stop for a long time, almost four, hour, uh, four hours. I reset my palette out here and did a little bit more work, but more of these thunderstorms. And they, they said it was going to be 70s all day t today and, uh, you know, clear blue skies and we've had thunderstorms. But anyway, so I did a little more work here. You saw a few clips and stuff and I added some more movements of light and dark of the greens right throughout through here. One of the things I plan when I do this is like his light shoulder, make put a little bit of dark right there into like shadows. We'll, we'll soften some of this out here. But see, that helps them all advance in the scene, which is what we want. Just like we're going to, um, you know, show a little bit more of the lighter color in through here, which on the shadow side of the horses will help them advance. And this is something, there was a, a wonderful, magnificent, uh, Western painter James Reynolds and uh, he did this a lot and you look at his paintings and you can see areas where he put high and low key areas in contrast with each other and that just created a tremendous amount of depth and so th that's something that's very important now see he created this tremendous amount of depth in his paintings and then some people always say oh I love your florals and how you get all these depths well I apply these techniques from a western painter right into what I do in florals and in everything so this is one important reason why you paint all the genres because looking at something in a different way helps you learn and, and identify it so I got some of that. So we're going to work on that. I want to get into, hopefully before the next storm, I want to get in here and work in on some of this. And um, I have a little bit of detail work. But one of the last things I want to show you is, see how I put some of the burnt siennas down here, here on the guello side of the horse, on the, on, on this uh, bay guello here, or guella, or guello if it's a stallion, or... or um, and uh, Guella, if it's a mare. And uh, then I took some of the grays, little touches of the grays, and moved it through onto this side as well. I will still do a little bit more at the end of the painting, like you've seen me do on other westerns. Sometimes use blue, sometimes use those other colors. But uh, I want to I want to work on his face here for a second. Now, this is one of my favorite, really, really soft brushes. And uh, this is a number two fusion filbert. And I went and got myself a new one here. It's the brush that we manufacture. Whoops. And I use it because it is soft. Uh, I try not to drop it, but I use it because it is very soft. It is very pointed and it allows me to do some little details here. Now we're going to keep the face and I'm going to add a little open medium to this, maybe even a little extender. I want this to just be very, very soft and translucent. We'll use burnt sienna, a little yellow, a little white, and you know, sometimes I'll cool it off or gray it off with a touch of the blue, especially since he is in the shadow here of this, uh, you know, this side here. So we'll use this, it should be a little lighter than what, yep, exactly what we had before. I'm just gonna put a light, soft coat of that. Not over everything, just over their face. And we're gonna play very simplistic uh, faces and stuff here. Very suggestive, very simplistic. He will have just a tiny little mark right up in here for the idea of his ear. And I'll blur that off just a bit. And then for his face, here we'll take, a, I have a little burnt sienna in blue made up from that horse right over here. So I'll take a look at that. That's pretty good. So we're going to basically just pull along the shadow which is going to be the eye sockets and the nose there. We'll pull that, and see this is a very soft brush, and the reason why I don't use that other synthetic that I had is that because it makes too much of a line, and this will not make any line or any texture. It's a real soft brush. So it just goes in and just puts in a little bit of that shadow there. And then good old Tom Selleck here has his classic mustache which we can add just a bit right in there. Okay, and that's just a touch low. And so rather than take it off and stuff, I'm gonna clean that color out. I'll go back to my light flesh color and I'll just push it up just a bit here. There, like that. It has to go a little wider, a little softer, a little higher. He has that big classic mustache here. So I'll just suggest that in there, like that. 
okay? And uh, you can suggest right into this area here. Now it's foreshortened, so you can suggest a little darker area that would be into that eye socket area there. And in other words, very, very soft. And, and then what I'll do, I generally do is, I'll come back and just shape a little bit with that light flesh, taking some of that out, tapping some of that out, and just leaving it very, very suggestive in there. And uh, let's soften through that stash there a bit too as well. There, there we go. And same thing over here with him. We'll push that in. And let's see, what else does he have? He has actually the line of the nose and stuff, but his eye socket there's a little severe, so we'll take a, a bit of the flesh and just tap right into that, pull that down. And I wanna put a, a touch of a shadow underneath uh, or his chin area there. So I'll use a bit of my darker color here and just suggest the, the line of the face there. And uh, maybe just a little lighter flesh here. This is very soft. It's a wonderful brush uh, for doing small little taps of color like this that we want to just suggest here. And so I'll just re-suggest that. There we go. Very soft little idea. I mean, it's you camera probably hardly just picks it up, but it's very, very soft and that's what I want this real soft, maybe just a touch of lighter color right down here on this side of him here. And I'll re-suggest that socket area right across. And see that just, it's just a, a very, very soft, suggestive facial features because you really, you know, a lot of artists, and it, these are small, these guys are really small. And so a lot of artists would not even spend the time putting a lot of facial features and stuff in there. And I don't. That's just basically what we're doing is just to eye sockets, a shadow under the nose, or a little bit of the Tom Selleck mustache, which the photo up there and what I have here shows it a little heavier. could be just a touch heavier. But, you know, you can always come back and add a little bit more a little later on. So... But it, you know, just gives you that suggestion that the face is there. Um, we have some very soft suggestions of the rains, which I'm going to do as a real dark, kind of dark blue, violet, and some burnt sienna. Um, and, you know, maybe, um, you know, just a suggestion here coming in through his hand, right down into here. Uh, just a suggestion of it, maybe... Uh, Suggestion of the bridle here. You know, you can put a nose strap on there if you want. Mine, I, I rode generally without, but uh, sometimes I did. I have a couple of sets. But uh, we'll put just a suggestion of this stuff here. And maybe a little bit on the other side there. And same goes with him. Just a dark, this, I skipped the line a little bit so it's not perfect here. There like that, just a, a, a suggestion of those reins and stuff. And you see I put just a suggestion of his stirrups. I didn't get really big into it, a suggestion of the girth strap here. You know, you can put more, but it's on the shadow side and I don't want to, you know, I want to keep this painting as simplistic as uh, really as, as possible here. And uh, maybe I'll just darken this eye just a touch. There we go. Little things like that. That's what I start to look at. And so that's very suggestive. I like the way that looks. Just that's, that's real soft suggestive. You can go back in there and put more details in the faces. There's certainly a lot of other videos that I have here where I put just a little bit more in there. But uh, in looking back and stepping back at this, you know, I, I've got the idea of where the ear is. I got the idea of the neckline, the idea of the eye sockets, a little bit of shadow. I could have a, a slightly darker shadow here up underneath. Let's just take a thin little bit here up underneath the hat and down here. 
that's better almost took out some of that ear so I'll just touch a little bit in there but that's the kind of stuff that I start to look at little suggestions of it and uh but you know because golly you know here's my thumb I mean his face is so small so you don't want to you know, you don't have room in there to make a lot. And the thing is, you know, if you use like a liner brush or something, you'll go in there and you'll put a lot of little detail and stuff. And that just doesn't, you just don't see it. I mean, when you look, you know, here, let's take a look at the close-up here that I have of, of his face here. See, you don't see that much. As a matter of fact, you see a little lighter flesh and mind than what you see on his there, see? But you don't see it. And so you don't want to, you don't want to come in there and paint a bunch of detail that you really don't that you really don't see, thinking that you have to paint a face so someone sees a face. People know that that's a person and they'll know it's a face. And a lot of artists will just do the light and shadow of it. And I could increase the light, the shadow of that just a bit, and I might, you know, towards the end. But right now, it's it's doing its job. So. I want to come in here and paint some of this stuff with you guys before we run out of time. And so I'm going to use a smaller uh, flat here, and I'm going to use some of the gray. Now, beautiful grays come from our blue, burnt sienna, and the red. Basically, that blue and red just makes beautiful grays. And um, I want to use some of the filberts and the flats, maybe a, a palette knife or two in there. And I want to set some of these rocks... I really want to create that little area right out here that juts out, creates a little cove. So blue and red get quite a bit of the color. Um, and we've got to do is we've got to, uh, you know, just you got to think along the lines of what um, James Reynolds did, you know, in creating the lights and darks of his painting you know, where you want to see stuff. So I've got to be careful. I, you know, you really want to get in there and that's getting really close to what's happening here. I got to make sure that this light dark contrast in here does not exceed what's happening to the light dark contrast in there. So I've got to be a little careful. That's the goal here. So I might have to lighten that up just a bit here. Lighten up some of these rocks through here, a little bit more reds and We'll just suggest some of them along here and uh, sometimes get some of those warmer tones, a little yellow, a little burnt sienna in there. Okay. Just kind of suggestive there. And I do like using the knife as well. Let's take the knife. Let's model up. Now, we've got to be careful because the knife is going to give us a lot of, a lot of interest in here that... Uh, you know, we might have to soften back with our brush. So we'll touch a few little rock lines here. Model, see how it's just modeled up. I don't, you know, I'm not picking it up perfectly here. And we'll just tap that along and create some of those little highs and lows of the rocks. Try not to get too many of them here. We'll add some of that out here. Just good grays here. Right up in there, a little beach. We want to create a little beach, but some more rocks. We want some more rocky points out there. This Most of this is going to be covered up. I plan on a tree right there. And uh, it would look great without a tree, but a tree up there would look really nice as well. Let's get some of these medium grays here. So if you get something that's a little too light, just take a knife with a little medium gray through it and take some of that out there so that you get just a, a little bit of the light and you can all and you go back and forth and that's where you're going to get the greatest interest guys is when you go back and forth a few times here model it up back and forth a few times that's when you'll get the greatest interest to some of these you know rocks and stuff that you have along here Let's take, and I'll show you, you know, a lot of times like when you're painting with me, paint water, paint rivers, there's a, a technique that I use that's really nice is I take some extender and a little bit of the meat and the open medium and I mix it up to it's just kind of a slippery thin stuff about one to one and I put it over the area that I'm going to work. Now this will slow down everything, but what it also does is it... Uh, 
makes my my knife, my brush, and everything that I do here slide over the surface really, really easy. And I like that. Now up in the Oregon coast and stuff, they have their beaches are very, very gray. So we can gray some of this a bit. But it's also nice to have a little bit of that pretty yellow sand. So but we'll gray back just a bit here. And so I'm just gonna paint over some of the stuff I did right there put that line of those rocks we might push also some of these trees back you consider it you know and i look at things because i'm building this now i don't have to copy my photo but i'm building this now so we might consider gray it back here just a bit pushing some of this back with some grassy slopes and you know just like what we're going to have here and that will take that look a little bit further back into the painting which you know might be kind of nice so let's look at that and see a few little grassy slopes there some rocks here a little bit of grays here a little bit of some of those you know just really impressionistic here and sometimes i'll just Grab this here. Let's grab some of the gray, some of this yellows, and let's just pull that through here. You know, the angles. See, remember that, you know, we talk so many times in our landscapes and stuff, pulling the angles, which gives us the, the feeling of that slope. So a little bit of that grassy slope right there and some of the rocks and stuff. It's kind of neat. Um, let's uh, get back to this. Let's get a bit more of our grayer, some rocks back up through here and stuff going on. Right into the grassy slopes here. And you can add lights, you can add everything. And I try to vary so I don't get exactly a straight line. And because that'll be a straight line is kind of a killer in a landscape like this. So we want to vary this just a bit. Soften some of that effect there. Watch this effect always in relationship to everything else you got going on. Let's get down to the beach here. Okay, so I have that nice yellowy color there. I'll add a little bit more white to that. Let's slide that right along our beach. Right up towards those rocks there. Okay. And uh, push that through nice and casual here. And I'll pull this right down out into this water because I'm not going to, because I'm going to redo all the water. I set the first look so it helped me, you know, paint what I wanted to do into the, the guys there. But, I, you know, it wasn't done. <laughs> Let's, uh, I think I want to have a bit more light on some of these rocks here and I want to and I, I've painted a little bit too far out if I was going to make that little cove area there which I'll go back and fix but we'll just tap a bit of that little rocky face in there okay now let's uh, fix up some of the cove some of the water the um, in there on the photo it's more of a bluey blue green a little bit of violet. I'll add some extender, a little open medium to this. Let's just pull this right along in here. And we're going to push this part back. We're going to actually cover up a lot of this right here with trees. But I'm going to push that a little further back and create that little rocky point there. And I'll just smear that out a bit. You don't want to have real, real super definite lines yet, okay? And uh, maybe just a touch of our light color with that. Pull that through. Let's get that. It's a little bit gray, so I will uh, pick up a little more blue, a little more white. It'll make it a little brighter here. You want the grayness for your depth in the painting, but... We, did, we want also a, a bit more brightness than what that does. So I'll create that little point and uh, 
which will create some of the depth and then we'll also tap in some rocks and stuff back here just little marks use little marks of your knife here and I'll be doing this a couple times so that uh, you know so that everything here um, will come together the colors will come together a little bit more so let's just pull that through okay a bit of that and um, then I'll look at the value as it gets back. I'm going to go to a little, lar uh, a, a bit larger brush. This is uh, my number 10. A little open medium. Let's clean that, yeah, that, that color out of there. Let's go to our blue and green, a little bit of violet here. And some open medium. And we'll push this right over here. I gotta be careful not to get too dark, so I'll be thinning this out. But I'm gonna use my paper towel here just to give some slight movement to the ocean here. See? Take some of it off, but it leaves a little bit of water movement there. That's what I want, okay? And I want it to get a little lighter as I come forward here, as I come up towards the beach. So I just I scrub and I use the edge of this brush. You're creating movement. You're thinking about movement. A lot of movement here. Okay. And um, let's get that a little lighter. Sometimes now as I come light, I'll add some of the sand color to the, uh, to the painting here as well. So that you, it, what it does is it starts to make the water look a little bit more transparent here as you get that up. As you get that transparency going there. Okay. And, um, yeah, that works. Now, at four, we can use some open medium, some white here, a little bit of the blue modeled into this. Um, sometimes I won't go quite so white, so I'll put it, because this is back, so I'll add a little gray to this, modeled into this. Now, you've seen me use the knife before. You've seen me use the brush like this before. I like all of the methods here. And uh, so I want to keep this kind of soft, so I'm going to use the brush. So I put it on here, and then I, I'm going to paint back into this and lift off some of this extra that I don't want here. I want to keep the waves a little softer than what you're seeing in the, um, in the photo. In the photo, you see a lot of stuff there, and it's great, and they're nice, you know, waves, but they might be a little bit too distracting. I find them just a touch too distracting. Let's try the knife. And if I'm going to use the knife, I'm going to put in a little extra open medium here. Okay, because I do like the knife. And let's just pull some of that through here. Get some of that interest there. Now, just balance that against your horse and rider. We do want to have interest here. But see, and that's a lot of interest <laughs> there, but it, it's not too bad. Now, you can push that with your knife, or you can do what I like to do is I'm going to take a clean brush here, and I'll, I'll go up into it, lifting off some of it until I get the look that I like. And wipe the brush in between here, and I'll just start lifting back off until I get a, a wave line there that I kind of like. And I don't want it, it quite as straight as what the photo shows. So I want it to undulate a little bit more. Let's add just a bit right back here. Right back in there. That's kind of neat there. And uh, we can add some way, some bubbly water right out there as well through that. A little bit of the ocean line. Let's add just a touch of the line. Now there's a lot more wavy lines in the photo, and I'm not going to add those. I'm going to, again, simplify down so I don't get too much, too much stuff in there, okay? And it's a choice. That's an artist's choice. If you like that, if you really like the ocean, then paint it. If I was painting a landscape and I wanted to pull, you know, do, a, you know, um, uh, Richard Smith kind of pulling your, you know, pulling you into the center of the painting. Maybe I paint 
more interest back here and a little less up into the uh, front and I pull you into painting. You've seen me do that before in some of the other paintings and stuff. So that's up to you. Let's add a little bit along the rocky edges right out there on this part. And again, I'll take a smaller brush, maybe a little bit of blue into that. And I'll tap along, soften, push up and in and soften and create some of those wave lines there. Okay. Maybe a few little thin, thin lines for some other kind of wave lines right out there. That's pretty nice. Um, I want just a touch of lighter blue to be right back behind this ridge, this rock, and I want to darken that rock. So I bring that rock, that little rocky point forward there. Maybe just a touch more of this light right out here. So you see, you get the impression of that beach back there. That's kind of neat. And uh, let's take a little bit of red, a little bit of our blue here. Nice little dark rock. And make sure we put a bit of that in there. There like that. So we see that nice little rocky point. It takes some of that in here. Those colors go back out there. I kind of like that. You know, will it be too much? I don't think so. I usually go in and ask my wife, did I overdo it? <laughs> she sometimes says, well, yeah, maybe a little. <laughs> you know, it's good to have people you can talk to and show your paintings to. And, and uh, they tell you, well, maybe you need to calm that down just a little bit. But I'm putting in the darks and putting in the lights and half tones. I think I do like um, what is happening on that slope. So I might build that slope just a bit more here. A little bit more, a little little green, a little burnt sienna, a little bit of the yellows here, a little different color here, and uh, yeah, just uh, a bit more of my golden yellow here. And you can tone that down, a little bit of the red and blue, because red and blue and yellow make your tertiary color, and you see it just grays that down a bit. So let's just gray that down just a bit. Take that down to the ideas of some of the rocks, maybe a bit of it right out over here before it goes to some trees again. You know, just it, it just opens up the coastline there. And then we're going to, like I started in through here, <clears throat> we'll go in and put in quite a bit more trees and the trees, you can mix up a bunch of different tones, but you got to be careful that it, it'll tend to make your painting a little flat. So I'm going to, I'm going to do it just by brush mixing in and then changing the tones. I'll make basically at least three or four values and tones as I work and see, I, I put different ones in here and, uh, and I will test it out and change it. So, you know, maybe a, a little bit darker color right in here. And remember what we said about the trees. Longer right up in here where we're going to uh, suggest, you know, some larger trees here. And so I use all different kinds of the brushes. I use the points, the chisels. You know, you've seen me do this with a small little... Uh, Bristle filbert, you've seen me do this all different kinds of ways here. And uh, I just don't want to get too much movement, a little more blue, a little bit darker right in here. More shadow, vary the marks. And so I come in with one color, then I'll come in maybe uh, a little bit softer color, more of a mid-tone, and then right into a lighter tone as well. And I'll vary this and I'll go back and forth as I put some of this on. So I'm thinking light and shadow of these pine trees and stuff, these conifers. The, the 
conifers that go on the Oregon coast. There's all different kinds of them, you know, from, of course, the Douglas uh, firs to the hemlocks and stuff like that So that we had. But you can just, you know, just suggest some of that. And we'll go back as we go further back here. And I'm going to start to, and my movements will get smaller. And I'll come in close to some of this, and you know, this, these lines, bring the trees down, sometimes down fairly close, sometimes just right onto the edge, and I'll bring those in. So that's what I'm going to do right out through here for right now. I kind of like that. It's, we're going to see how that dries down. Um, and if it doesn't, you know, if it, if it takes away from the horsemen and stuff by the time that we get here, I don't think it will, um, you know, too much, because see what I'll do is, what I've got coming is my real light, which is really going to pop these guys off, is some real light bushes and greens and stuff like this that these guys will, uh, you know, play up against. And by the time I come in here and plan this real light, you know, probably around the value 8 or so, 8 to almost a 9, light struck grass right in here, playing up against the cool of that Guala horse there, that really pulls it quite a bit farther forward in front of that. But if it doesn't, then I get to atmosphere this whole area. I just atmosphere it and uh, we'll see. Some of this is gonna push back because I'm gonna put a tree right there. But I wanna leave time for us to do that. So I'm just gonna come in and do all of these little marks, all different kinds of variations of green. Green, burnt sienna, yellows, a little blue, a little violet, a little red to tone it, gray it down, lights and darks, and just start tapping that all through there to create this, uh, the foresty look of it. Then we'll come back and we'll paint the front of the painting, okay? All right, I'll see you guys in 30 minutes. <laughs> okay, bye. Hi everyone, welcome back. Okay, so I just added a lot of movement. A little darker up here, a little lighter back here, letting the colors fade away as they go back. Just put little splashes of it. And you know, what I did like here is I just took some of these colors, put it on there, and then took a wet brush and just pulled through it so that the color becomes more transparent. And it just walks it back to that atmosphere. And again, like I showed you with the back mountain here, you could put in some of that atmospheric sky color as a wash over that. The same thing can happen here. As a matter of fact, I'll show you just a little bit of that. Um, if you take a big brush and we just take a, a touch of our atmospheric sky here, which uh, I wanted it here got to get it very light we got to we're almost a white right and maybe just a tiny tiny touch of violet into that here but almost a white it's going to dry darker so we've got to get that value way up way way up let's add quite a bit of extender here to it to thin it out I'll rinse out my brush before I do this so I take all the extra color out and if you're really nervous about it you can uh Put a light coat of extender over it here just and you see the extender wakes up the colors a little bit but put a light color coat of extender over it and that will allow this color to just slide and glaze over it here and you can see we'll just put a whisper of that see how that starts now see this is a little darker right there so i just take just a whisper of that right over that right over that edge, right over that, right back there, and it sends it right back. See how it sends that right back? Now, you can take your damp paper towel and slowly bring it back to the front of what you want, like right down in through here, but I'll leave these edges there just a little bit more atmospheric. Maybe we'll pull this edge back just a touch more there, and so you can control that. You can even take some of that atmosphere and push it like back up over here onto this side here and wipe it back down. And I'll wipe it, you know, a lot of times I'll wipe it in the direction of like my trees and stuff are here. So it just softens that back. So you see that real deep and that dark coming right in through here. And, you know, do you put more in here? Well, you know, they really don't have that much back in there, but I've got a lot of nice color, and I really want to concentrate up front. But that atmospheric uh, stuff just really works, and you can use that for 
a little mist right along the edge of the, uh, you know, the coastline there too. Just let a little mist and stuff come up through there. And uh, that just works real nice, you know, because with some of the coasts and stuff, you get that mist. And, uh, or where we were up on the Oregon and the, and the Northern California coast, we got fog all the time. So anyway, but uh, let's go back into here. So you can, you can do that. You can do it as much as you want. Let's go back into here and let's get some of our light. Let's add some extender into this. So this is going to stay wet here for a little bit. And we wanted to create this uh, little ridge line right here, and then one that's kind of fading away here. And I like this. This is the movement. And it takes quite a few times, if those of you who've seen me, you know, paint this, it takes quite a few times of movement, and, uh, you know, doing this to, just like with the trees, here I'm using a one inch brush, but just like with the trees, to get some of these grasses going here. And I've showed you some other ways in which I do grasses and stuff. And we want to get some of these greens in here, some of these other colors, burnt siennas and greens. And I'll just do this. I'll just splash them through like this, pick up some of those yellows on my brush, and I'll start pulling them through here like this. And you'll start to see I get some of these interesting colors here as I pull these through this and I'm using just a corner of this little soft fusion brush like this you've seen me use uh, you know the pastry brush you've seen me use my very special grass brush that I did on a lot of westerns um, which is my uh, I don't think I have it out here right now I mean, hey I do this this brush that I pound this through this makes great uh, great grasses and I might use it here at the end to push some of those grasses on. I have lots of video that shows, you know, working those grasses. But right now I'm going to keep this relatively soft uh, as I work this. And I like to model this up. I like this so as I work these colors I get some, you know, differences in these grasses. And I'll use different long strokes, short strokes, roll the brush, use it a little different each time here as I do this so I get these grasses that come off at all different kinds of angles here. Lots of yellows, burnt siennas, greens here. Let's get some of this golden color up in here as well. We'll come back with the light and shadow. This is just a real quick way to build some of this pretty movement of these grasses here on this hill. And uh, I'll lighten this up, come back with some lights, maybe even a little Hansa into some of this light as I do this, as I develop some of the real light grasses here. That'll come up right along the horse and right up in front of him there just a bit. And some of those will just set up like that, see, and you just, and it builds just real nice, real quick, nice grass here. And, but don't get too carried away, but it just, you know, nice marks. Building color, constantly changing and rotating your brush. Let's even get a little Darulite in there so we get some different yellows here. You don't want to create a rainbow, but we, you know, just create some of these beautiful colors. Get some of those greens and stuff back up over here. Some of these take right up to the edge of the horse because he's walking through some of these grasses. We have to restate some of our our shadows and stuff there. But this is just all good stuff. Let's just get some additional shadow in there. So we had uh, burnt sienna, blue, violet uh, here into some deeper shadows. And, you know, we got cast shadows here coming from the horses that are coming out this way. And I'll use the grass strokes here because, you know, some of the grass will rise up above the plane of the cast shadow. And um, we want to be able to emulate that. A few little light colors here and there. Lights there. A few more shadows down in here. Here, this boom. So you see me use all different kinds of brushes and you know it's and I like to do that. Let's just put a few lights here. Nice 
nice lights right up in front here as they're walking through some of that. And maybe a bit more of the yellow and green right down here. So it's not quite as light right down there. And uh, yeah, and let's get even a little bit more light here. Maybe uh, even a touch more here builds this up. And, you know, you do long strokes, of course, you get the, the feeling of uh, nice long grass. You do short strokes, you get the feeling of shorter grass. And if you want to do like a James Reynolds, you would soften some of this off, maybe even compress your strokes. In other words, move your marks closer together so you don't get as much variation in them and soften that out a bit right out over here and keep the grass like a James Reynolds, boom, right up in here. Does that make sense? You know, and you can go to like this little grass brush and really set in some nice grass. You see those quick little marks like that. It just sets in nice grass here that is going to be a little closer here to our subject, which is what you'd see. And then, of course, you'd let this, I use more of the flat and the angle here, just driving it, you know, slightly different as I go further away there and uh, away from it. We'll just put a few little marks. I like the little marks that uh, say the grass is rising up above the shadows and stuff like that. I like those those kinds of looks here and uh, maybe a few little marks for some grass right out through here, but I'm going to let that soften out as I go further out there, small little hits, just little sparks is what I call them, little sparks of grasses there. Maybe a few little sparks right out through here. That will be good. I like using these brushes, and I've said in some of the other videos, this brush is so, it's so great that I took one of our round um, round bristles that we have and I took it out there and I hammered it flat and then I took some scissors and cut different parts of it out and so I got this real undulation of a brush and then I let some paint dry in it and uh, so it stiffens it up a bit and but I can always you know pull it apart and do other things if I want to make grasses you know really really thin light grasses like this I can use that tip that's spread out a bit and just hit some thin little ideas of some of these grasses here. And that way, you see, just ideas here. And, uh, yeah, and pull, you know, so I just, the thing is to get a nice variation of them. That's what you want to get. Let's take and move some of that color just real casual right down through here. Use just our brush here to to simulate the the, ed, the the edge of this next little line here we use just our brush we don't use that definite uh, brush because that'll make it too precise here maybe a little extender so it slides you don't want to get your marks too much see you want this so there's a little hill that's right there and so I mean I can build it up in the video there they have all kinds of twigs and all that kind of stuff and you can do that um, I don't think I will I don't think it's necessary I think this is all that needs to say oh this is a grass slope maybe a little bit over here and uh, maybe a few little grasses right up over here just to push some of that in there few of it few right up over the horse just a bit I think that's all it needs and uh, then if we want to put that bigger tree right out here now I like to use right around the six or so here do we want to put that oh I got some of that mark there and so we'll just take that out um, <clears throat> do we want to put that uh, bigger tree right back up over here let's pull this over just a bit 
And we want that, that tree, which does add depth. And the thing is, your eye moves off here. And adding a tree right here will increase the depth or channel you back through this way. It might cover up some of our nice depth there. So it is a, uh, you know, it's a, it's a decision you have to make. Uh, I'm going to take some burnt sienna and some green, model that into my brush, and I'm just going to try it, keeping it relatively close right out here right now. And so what I want to do is just, and I'm going to make it very airy so you pick up some of this stuff here and uh yeah and but we got to have some areas here that are going to be a little more solid here before it goes airy and so it takes out some of your look there but you know i mean and but if we leave some of that then it does its job as well so let's just see some of you like it some of you don't like it i am going to do it so and uh yeah, and I find myself, I don't want to paint around, so I'm not going to uh, paint around. I'm just going to cover some of this up. We'll push this over here. Maybe uh, another little mark or so of one coming branch that's going to come up up over here. You know, yeah. And soften some of those edges. We can so then come back and soften some of the edges. Blur them out a little bit here. Yeah, but we are, you know, this tree is right up into the front with us right up here. So we do want to have um, some pretty good uh, edges on it because it's right up into the front. And this is what's going to bring it up into the front. So we'll get a little heavier here. And we'll bring this right on down. And then we'll start adding some... Uh, trunks and branches and then some other movements here to it there we go and a little bit of other movement here and then um, we'll pull in some branches some more brown some burnt sienna some yellows stuff here maybe a touch of blue to help gray that just a bit here some some lighter color with it as well and uh, we'll just emulate here some of the or just give the idea of branches and stuff through here okay and maybe a little blue and burnt sienna is the darker color so we'll add some ideas Stay suggestive of it. It's all going to soften off here in just a minute. But stay kind of suggestive of it. Here. And let's just pull this down a bit. There like that. Maybe a mark or two. I want to keep this very suggestive right out here. I like just the marks and the the wispiness of it. So see, it pulls in. It, they're going to be riding right through this little edge of this tree. Let's go up a bit here. Darken that edge right there with that tree. And in the photo, it's more of a, a rounded shape and stuff, but I'm going to point it up just a bit, a little bit more like the like a um, Douglas and stuff. Let's Warm, lighten, warm this up, add some of our yellow colors here, yellow greens, bring this back more, a little bit of burnt sienna in there, that's good, a little bit of change the color, always, always change the color. Take some a little further out of this color so you don't have just the dark out there. Okay, lighten some of that up. Okay. Building, and it, it's a building process here. And try not to just tap, tap, tap your marks. You can see I'm scrubbing it a little bit, changing it around here. 
you know I like to uh, to do different different kinds of marks I like to work really quick otherwise I I I tend to make it all the same so I try to work pretty fast so I don't make it all the same here there we go we'll build that up let's get a little bit lighter when I add light I like to add yellow maybe a little more green to it so even some Hansa here get a get a lighter tone a, you know a sunrise I mean a sunshine tone you know maybe this uh, most of it should be with the light source should be in shadow but you can have some edges of it here that uh, don't you know that just give you the feeling of some sunlight hitting it here some nice light hitting it every once in a while here we go and you know like I'll touch and smear that around a bit too just to get a different feel for it you know and uh the thing is, is the hardest thing about it is to make it all a little different. That's what I find the hardest part of it. But this is going to work. So both work with or without the tree. That's your decision. It'd be interesting to see how many of you paint it with the tree and how many paint it without the tree. The, you know, the, the thing is, the viewer, when they go to see this, they don't know. So, you know. But I'd like to know, you know, how many of you like it with the tree, without the tree. A lot of landscape artists add the big tree and stuff off to this side because what this does is this stops your eye from going out of the painting and pulls you right back into here. And uh, so, yes, you lose a little bit of your scape. You could small it down a bit, but um, you lose a little bit of your, your landscape there, but not too bad. And... Uh, We'll add just a few more little marks of light here on that. And a few little marks here. Just touches around there. Just sometimes pull and blur them out a bit so you get some of that nice, you know, kind of softness there. Lots of fun, fun ways to do it. That'll tap and move, and you could even use that fun landscaping brush. Sometimes go back, you know, and, and add a dark. Here's a little more dark blue. You know, push some of that shadow around. Especially like you can make, you know, like conifers and stuff, they grow in the clumps. And you can push some of this around up into the the form, the clumps of a... But, you know, again, this isn't the painting about the tree. This is a painting about the rider, so I don't want to get so much stuff out here that, you know, the tree takes away from the rider. So i got to be kind of careful here. I'm getting kind of carried away. So, but uh, let's take a little light and just kind of push that around out there a bit. Leave some of those sky holes in between, or here it would be landscape holes in between. And since the scape right there is, is you know, um, the landscape there is pretty dry, we might be able to take a little water, yes we can, and remove back to see a bit of the, more of the landscape. So you can take it back a bit if you want to see some more of the landscape and stuff like that. But, that's all up to you, how much you want to see. But that gives you a, a good idea there. Maybe uh, a few more little twiggy kind of things and stuff, you know, through. If some of them got covered up, you know, just little marks of them. Here. There we go. Just little bits. and. <clears throat> and then um, I always set the, when I do a tree or something like that, I always set it back into the grasses and stuff and set some stuff in and around and just uh, get some of those colors. Now, right out through here, I want to take a little green and a 
little uh, yellows and stuff and flatten some of this just a bit. But uh, overall, I like that. Overall, it's I like the whole painting. And it's taken me, when I look at it down here, so you can see, that closes you through here. You know, maybe you want to take some of the blue, that pine, and the burnt sienna. Maybe you want to add that feeling of a tree right here, which would be great. Give you some nice depth. Just the feel of one or two. Maybe a slightly higher one right here. Right out here. Grab some of that. So you feel that there behind them. So put in the dark. Let's put in a little bit of the sienna colors for some branches and twiggy things here okay and uh, let's take some it's further away we don't have to get quite as involved but uh, let's just add in a few lights remember your light is coming on to the the uh, left side here so we'll get really light here on to the left side here Yeah, just kind of push those around a bit. There we go. And you can blur some of that. Just the blurring helps set it back. Watch in uh, relationship to some of the other uh, colors that you had over here. You know, and you just blur them just a bit and that will soften them out. So that, and, and it pulls your eye back up over here to the guys here. Maybe a touch more light. Little green, little light. That might be too light, but just, so we'll use restraint. Just a little bit of it there to help maybe it touch more yellow. Into that. Just blur those. There, as they come up through these trees. Here. There we go. Light to the left. Shadow to the right. And again, just like we did before, you can come back and add some areas of shadow, which I like to do, just push back up in there. And I, you know, I keep this relatively quick because I don't want to play around and make perfect trees and compete against my uh, riders there, you know. Maybe I'll take some of this color, just softly, here, right down in here. Since these trees are a little closer, I'll take some of that down in there. And then maybe a bit of the shadow here to... So I like to paint the light and the shadow. Again, yeah, just gives a, a bit more movement here. How much you do, that's up to you. You you know, how much are you going to put? How much interest are you going to put into this, this work here? How much do you want to see the riders? Or if you don't have the riders there, put in some nice bushes and stuff. You could put flowers in here and let that go back and uh, have a nice look that way as well so all kinds of nice things that you can do um you know it's it's up to you let's just pull that back just a bit there soften that out just a bit there we go yeah i like that just fading kind of light into that mountain there and yeah, this horizontal line of the surf here bothers me just a bit. I might, and see, if, if you can bring some more clarity, look back to see if you like some of that clarity. Let's um, clean this for a second. Bring just a little bit of the light color and the gray and, and bring up that coastline just a bit there. Matter of fact, it might be best to do that with the knife. Bring up this coastline so that the viewer gets a really nice, even if it's set back there, they'll get that 
a little bit better feeling of that coastline going along there. And so it's just adjusting. You know, I, I call it the push and the pull of the painting. I'm going to pull this little part of that coastline. It's going to go up a little bit more. I'll pull it just a touch more forward here. Just a touch more forward with just some marks. Leave some of that. And that just pulls it just a touch forward. Maybe um, softer. Little tiny bit more definition in here into some of these trees right up here. Right there. So I push that uh, that uh, atmosphere back a little too far. So you just bring it back just a bit. It's the push, and what I call the push and the pull of the painting to make sure you get a nice visual depth. That might be too close. <laughs> so I'll just take some of that off here and let that atmosphere color come back through there. But you have to judge that, you know, just uh, how far back that goes. But there you go. That's... Uh, a pretty good look at it and I feel like we captured the look of the writer a bit here and uh, you know I might uh, well his face is just right about what that is there so uh, you know I got the good light and the shadow and everything of that the, the sorrel over there could be a little bit darker right through there but I like overall and everything is uh, you know painted very simplistically you're painting on the shadow side so you don't want to go in there and you know, really define the, the blanket, the girth strap, the, you know, the saddle edges and all that kind of stuff. Let those shadows run together. You know, people who ride horses know pretty much, you know, what it is there. I might bring up this, this stirrup up here just a bit more on that side. Um, and, uh, you know, but I'm just going to keep everything else just really, really simplistic because... Overall, I like the uh, the look of the painting and stuff. So, and if I start working on it anymore, I might make it stiffer. And I don't want to do that. I know that about myself. If I work on it too long, it doesn't always improve. It becomes stiff. So, you know, I'll be careful with that. But uh, overall, I kind of like that. It kind of takes you in this journey right through here. I could, you know, put maybe a little more light right here. You just right now, it's just sit back and evaluate. And, and try. And for those of you that, you know, are new to the acrylics like this, and I always tell everybody, you can try. And we have a medium called a uh, multi-surface sealer. You could put that, it's really easy, you can put that right over the painting here, and then you can uh, come back and try something. If you don't like it, it can wipe off with water really easy, and it never hurts the painting because the sealer protects it. So if you like your painting and you want to try a few things and you're not sure, a little bit afraid of messing it up, then use some of that sealer and uh, you will uh, protect the painting here, and that might be something really good for you to think about. There we go. Just lighten that little hill there just a bit. Pull that through. Keep those angled strokes because that's what gives it that of, of feeling of the of the hill. You know, just a little bit of it. Let's just atmosphere this just a bit. Pull some of that through, right through there. And uh, just as a, an idea there, right? That's pretty good. Well. I don't want to do any more to it. Okay, all right. So hopefully you enjoy that. It gives you some ideas of, you know, bringing in the foreground, setting something back here. And look at how, you know, from the first part of the video, I have not touched this again. And it just has so much interest right back through there. Could have a little more right up through here. But, yeah, it's pretty good. I, it does its job. Um, and that's all I want to do. But, um, you know, it's uh, it's fun. It's fun to do to set something like this in, especially those of you that are learning to, to get the visual depth to a painting by adding the figures, the horses, the Western, right here to a landscape. And, um, you know, it, it just it's just really good practice. We'll do more of this kind of stuff too, um, you know, putting in some really deep depths, uh, you know, to our uh, to our landscapes with with figures and horses and stuff like that because it's just good visual practice. I could have a little more shadow here, but... No, we'll, we'll leave it. That would really definitely pop this even farther forward if I put a little more shadow there. But Oh, and there should be a little shadow 
over there on the tree. I'll add that in, but that shadow needs to go into that tree there as well because that tree is casting a shadow, right? And it'll be blue and green. I'll add that. You have a good time. I'll see you guys on the next one. Don't forget to, uh, we'll just paint ourselves out of here. Don't forget to uh, like and share the uh, the videos, okay? So I can, that's what helps support our channel. Uh, those of you that are interested in collecting some of our paintings, like I said, we have a big sale coming up. The gallery sale that supports our channel, that supports uh, that supports our uh, everything we do here, our online foundation, everything that's coming up at the uh, end of October. And uh, so hopefully uh, some of you that are looking for that, watch for the information in the community page, the links if you're interested in collecting a painting. We would appreciate your support and stuff. We put all of our paintings on sale, and that funds our, basically, the channel here. It funds all of our, um, our activities where we give out scholarships and everything like that. It does all of that for uh, charities and stuff. So anyway, if you're interested in helping out like that, that would be great. Watch for the information on the community page and I'll show some more videos for the end of the month on that. And I'll uh, and give you the links to every of the paintings you can go shopping, especially for Christmas, okay? All right, and those of you, feel free to paint it. Feel free to paint it, uh, this particular painting and sell it and, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, come over and join us on some of our group, our, our MeWe group. The links are in the video description. Post your pictures and stuff like that. Show us what you're doing. We'd like to, we'd like to see, okay? Thanks very much, guys, and I'll see you on the uh, next video.